Hello, I'm Terry Carter with the University of Georgia's Cooperative Extension, and I'm in the Family Consumer Science Department. Um, I wear a lot of hats, and one of the things I do is to do cooking demos, but today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to be making pepper jelly. Pepper jelly is something that is very close to my heart because it's something that I grew up on. Um, I was raised in Alabama with my grandparents, and so I had the opportunity to experience a lot of foods that were old foods, historical foods that are part of our history. And pepper jelly happens to be one of those things. You may say, well, why would somebody want to eat pepper jelly? Well, it's a different kind of jelly. It's not one that you would put on, um, per se, you know, a biscuit in the morning. What I like pepper jelly with would be a pot of peas, and it's kind of like um, a relish in, in a way, because you kind of eat it as a condiment, condiment, I'm sorry, as a condiment along with something you're eating. So black eyed peas with um, some pepper jelly is delicious to me. So today we're gonna start um, making our pepper jelly and I can tell you jelly making is a process. So we're gonna kind of do these in different steps. So we're gonna start with first of all our peppers and what kind of peppers we have. I have some bell pepper here. Pepper jelly requires two different kinds of peppers hot peppers and then just another pepper for flavoring. And you're not gonna put as many hot peppers as you do, um, I would say sweet peppers. So these are our sweet peppers. I have bell peppers in yellow, red, orange, and I also have some sweet snacking peppers. And so we're gonna puree these and we're also gonna puree our hot peppers. Now let me tell you, be very careful with your hot peppers because you don't want your pepper jelly to be too, too hot. Now how hot it is, depends on your taste. I don't like things too hot. So I want just a little bit of heat just to know I am eating pepper jelly and not just the sweet jelly. So um, I have some of these peppers here that I grew. Actually, um, all of these I grew in the garden. So these are some pretty hot peppers here. And you wanna make sure you taste your peppers before you add them. So just give it a little taste, bite it, or at least put your tongue on it if you don't wanna bite it. So we're gonna start by going ahead and putting in our um, peppers here and pureeing them. And I'm probably going to have to do these in two batches, I would think. I don't think these are all going to fit, and that's just fine. And you just want to put in just a little bit of vinegar just to give it a little liquid um, to pulse in. All right, so here we go. I hope everything turns out well here. And we're going to turn this on. Once again, you don't want to add too many at one time. You have to be patient with these things, okay? Okay, so we have our peppers um, in here, and we actually got all of them in here at one time. I just kept adding, well, not at one time. I kept adding more peppers to it, but we've got puree up to the point that we feel comfortable. Now that was really probably the hardest part is getting the peppers chopped it in here. And as we said, we added just a little bit of vinegar. This is not water, this is vinegar. So at this point, we're ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and take our pureed peppers out. A right or wrong way to um, do this as far as what kind of peppers you use. Uh, pepper gel is made kind of like at the end of the season when you have a whole bunch of peppers left in the, um, in the field and you harvest them and you gotta figure out what to do with them. Um, you can freeze them, you can dehydrate them, you can make them into pepper jelly like this. There's a lot of different things you can do with peppers, especially in the fall when you have so many coming in at one time because here in Georgia, we have the opportunity um, of growing peppers late into the fall. Um, we just had a first freeze here really at the end of November. 
So um, we had a lot of peppers left over. So we wanna go ahead and move on to the next step. So the next step is we have our peppers in here. We're gonna add the rest of our vinegar. Remember we added just a little bit of vinegar um, to, to this because we wanted to make sure we had enough liquid in there that they would actually um, puree down. So at this point, we put our peppers in here, we have our vinegar in here, and now we're gonna move on to the next step, which is to cook this, okay? So we'll be right back after we finish this next step. All right, see you in a minute. So we've cooked on our peppers and it took about 15 minutes for them to really cook down well. So the next step is to start actually getting the peppers ready to make the jelly. Now let me show you some of the things you have to have. Um, first of all, you're gonna have to have some pectin. The recipe that you're using, and we're using the recipe from our UGA book, So Easy to Preserve, and this is available. You can purchase this yourself. All these recipes have been tested by UGA and the National Home Canning. We're back. And we've cooked down our peppers for about 10 to 15 minutes to get them nice and soft. So the next step is to strain the peppers. But before we go on to that next step, we want to make sure you have everything you need to do your canning. Uh, for one, you need to have your canning jars and your lids and your bands. And those need to be in water. And you need to have those sterilized before you even really get started. So make sure you have your jars before you start because I forgot to check. But luckily we have plenty of them. And you also want to have um, this. This will allow you to actually get um, the jelly in the jar without splashing or getting anything anywhere else. So to keep it really neat. So this is necessary. Um, also, you have this. And this is to actually take the jars out of the water so you don't have to put your hands in the water. So this is a really, really handy dandy tool that you need. We also have this. And it actually has on the end a magnet. So when you're lifting your lids and your bands out of that hot water, you actually put this down and your lids come up. So this is very handy as well. And this is also important because this measures the head space in your jar. And this end allows you to kind of poke down everything so there are no air holes in there. So these are really important things. So the next step, as we said, also, before I forget, you need some pectin. Now your recipe will tell you whether or not to use liquid pectin or powdered pectin and what kind. So make sure your recipe clearly tells you that and make sure you get that ahead of time. This one calls, this recipe calls for liquid pectin. pectin. And we actually had two in the pack, so we're only using one. And that two pack was about $5.50. So not so cheap, all right? So next thing we're gonna do is to actually strain the peppers and we need to get about two and a half cups of pepper juice out of this and let's hope that we do okay so you can strain this through a cheesecloth you have different methods of straining i'm just going to be using a regular strainer because i actually want to get some of the pieces actually in the jelly so here we go and let's hope we get two and a half cups of liquid i don't know i hear that liquid coming but i don't know how much we're going to get so we're gonna sit this to the side here and let's go. And I'm actually gonna try and mash this a bit so we can get enough liquid out of here. This may take a minute for this to actually drain very well, but I'm gonna help it along a little bit here, okay? Let me pull this over here so you guys can see this a little clearer some of these things out of the way here. And I know this seems like a long process, and it is. Um, jelly making has never been a quick process. You have to remember our ancestors did this um, as a way to survive and a way to put some things in the pantry over the winter so they will be able to eat well. So jelly making, um, this is pretty easy for me because we're just making one batch. And I remember growing up as a little girl, we would do jelly making and it would take a long time all day um, to get it because we had so many fruit that we had to process. So this is more for fun. But I do love pepper jelly, so I'm really hoping this turns out well. Let's see how we're looking. Let's see if we're getting two and a half cups of liquid here. And also, the color of your liquid will depend on the color of your peppers. 
So if you want a green pepper jelly, then you use green peppers. And if you want a lighter golden um, pepper jelly, which is what our recipe calls for, and we're using the recipe in the So Easy to Preserve book. And this is a great book, and this is um, by the University of Georgia. And also, if you want recipes, you can go to the National Center for Home Preservation. That's a great website, and UGA works with them as well. And so that will be www.nchfp.uga.edu if you want to check that website out, okay? So I'm going to press a little bit more, and let's see how much liquid we got. Y'all think we got two and a half cups? Ooh, I hope so. Let's see. Here we go. This is our two cup here. Ooh, I don't know if we're going to make it. I don't think so. Not quite two and a half cups. Okay, so we're going to try and process this a little bit more to see if we can get some more liquid out of here. And if we can't, what I'm going to do is actually um, squeeze this out and see if we can get a little bit more liquid out of there. So give me just a minute. We'll be right back and we're going to see if we can extract a little bit more juice. Okay, thanks. Go. Okay, so I'm going to try and strain out a little bit more um, of our juices from our peppers. And so I have a cheesecloth here that I'm going to be using and straining that through. And let's see how much more juice we can get out of here. All right. So now we're going to try and squeeze here and make sure this isn't hot. You don't want to burn yourself. You know, this is going to be a little warm, but I think I can handle it. Yeah, see? We're actually straining and getting more juice, and this is pretty hot, <laughs> so I may have to wait a little bit here. Yeah, we're getting a little bit more. Hopefully we'll have enough. And so if your peppers are still a little hot, just wait a while. Give it some time, you don't wanna burn yourself. As I said, this isn't a quick process, so take your time, you know, and just do what you're supposed to do. All right, so let's check this again and see how much juice we have now. Okay, we're right at two cups, so we're still about a half a cup short. So I'm gonna strain just a little bit more here. See if we can get one more half a cup out of here, I don't know, but we shall try. Yeah, we're getting a little bit more liquid. We may come up with a half a cup. We might have a half a cup, we'll see. Patience is a virtue. Oops. <laughs> that's okay. A little hole okay. came in here, but that's fine. I can skip that. Part. So that's okay. So let's see. We have another half a cup here. We may make it. Oh, we just about did it. We have almost two and a half cups. So that's great. All right. So we can move on now to the next step since we have our two and a half cups of our pepper juice. And I haven't tasted it, so I don't know how hot it is. <laughs> I guess I should have, but well, I will here soon. So give us a minute and we'll be right back, all right? Hello, so we're back yet again. As I said, making jelly can be a long process. It usually is, so be patient. So we've done uh, most of the hard work now. We've got our jelly jars and our lids already in there being sterilized. So the next step is to take our liquid and it did take us a minute to get to this liquid. Um, so we wanted two and a half cups. We're just a little bit under that, but that's okay, not a problem. Let's see what it smells like. Whew, it smells like hot peppers. And so here's a half a cup, and I actually added in some of our pepper to this because I don't want this to be just a clear uh, pepper. I want you to actually see the peppers in there so you know that this is a pepper jelly, all right? And next thing, we're gonna add the five cups of sugar. 
And eventually we, we want this to melt down. So we're gonna have to cook this for a while, back onto the stove again. But first of all, we're gonna mix this up very well until our sugar is dissolved before we add it back to the stove. So this is kinda, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that is what it's looking like, okay? And we're just gonna keep mixing until we get the sugar dissolved, all right? Now, as I said, the recipe we use is from So Easy to Preserve, and we use the golden pepper jelly recipe. Some of the recipes call for different things, but you wanna make sure you're using a reputable recipe. And we know that this recipe has been tested by UGA and the National Center for Home Preservation, so we know this is a recipe that works. Now don't use your grandmother's old recipe from 1900. We've changed a lot of things and we found out a lot of things since then, so make sure you're using an up-to-date recipe, and that up-to-date recipe should tell you exactly what you should be putting in there. So don't variate, don't go off the script, and don't add other things to your recipe because it could change the outcome of the recipe. For example, your jelly may not sit, so you'll have something that's liquid. So make sure you stay on with that. So that didn't take long. We've got the sugar incorporated into the pepper jelly juice. And so all we have to do now is to get this cooking again. So give me another minute, and when we come back this time, we're gonna have that jelly ready to go in our jars, okay? So let me go and cook this for a little while. We're only gonna cook this, I believe, for just a few minutes, I think our recipe says. Um, process, let's see, um, add pectin, and really boil for about one minute, that's it. So if we're only boiling for a minute, we'll be right back here shortly, all right? See you in a minute. Okay, so we've come to just about the last step. We added our sugar into our um, pepper mixture and it's thickened it up and that's what it's looking like. And the last step before putting it back for a boil is to actually add the pectin in. So here's our liquid pectin. That's what it looks like. And pectin is basically um, something that thickens your and sets your fruit. Some fruit naturally has pectin. For example, if you were making cranberry sauce, your cranberry sauce would pretty much create its own pectin. You wouldn't have to add anything. It's gonna set up on its own. Other fruit has less pectin in it, so you have to add it. And if you wanted to, you could also make your own pectin at home. That's a lot of extra work when it's just so easy to buy this from the grocery store. And so now that we've added our pectin, we want this to boil one more time before we actually add it to our jar. Believe me, folks, we're gonna have jelly here in just a few minutes, all right? So one more step on the stove, boil this for one minute, and then we're gonna add it to our sterilized jars, okay? All right, be right back. All right, guys, we're finally there, and we're about to fill our jelly jars here. So we have the jelly made, we have the pectin in here, so the last step is to go ahead and fill our jelly jars. So let's go ahead and start that. This is very hot, so be very careful when you when using this. And let's see if we actually get five jars. The recipe says five jars, so we'll see. Now, if you have some stuff on the top, you may want to skim this off a little bit. I'm going to skim just a little bit of this off because if you don't skim it off, it will become part of your jelly. So let's skim off the frothy stuff on top. You want to try to do too much because you don't want to lose any of your jelly. Just enough to get the frothy stuff off the top, okay? All right. I think that's pretty good. It won't hurt you, but it'll just look prettier if you get the frothy stuff out. Okay, so jar number two. And these jars are, have been sterilized. I've just pulled them out this pot over here. And you wanna touch these as little as possible because you have sterilized them. All right, so we have a little bit more left. So we're looking at now, I think we can do five jars. So I do have another jar in here. So I'm gonna, remember I said to use these and lift this out so that you're safe. Right. So I'm gonna turn that upside down because I drained all of the water out. And then I'm gonna touch it on the side and sit it up. And I think that would be jar number five. And let's see if that fills us up. Yep, it sure does. We may have enough for just a little bit more, but we're gonna hold that there for now. All right, so at this point, you wanna go ahead and get your lids. Get your lids on. See how 
how the magnet just actually picks that up for you. And you can just place that on there, touching as little as possible. Oops, let's grab that again. I'm gonna... I'm gonna grab another one of our lids here. And we wanna stay as, as clean as we can. Touch as little as you can when you're doing this, okay? rings on there and we're gonna only gonna do finger tight we're not trying to get these as tight as we possibly can just finger tight there you go grab another one of these and finger tight all right and another one finger tight and this is very hot so please be very careful Aren't those beautiful? The camera lady said it took forever though. <laughs> so all we want to do now is wait for these to set and hopefully they will set and become very jelly-like. But um, at this point, the next thing we do once we set them here is to put them back into a water bath canner. And once again, you're going to be following your instructions and your water bath canner says, um, wipe the rims with a damp, clean paper towel adjust list and process five minutes in a boiling water bath. Now some recipes are going to say to use a pressure canner. Um, this actually says boiling water. So make sure you're doing what your recipe says exactly and not deviating doing what you want to do because you could have some major problems there. Okay. So at this point, we're pretty much done. We'll come back and let you guys see this after we process it and see if our jelly set. All right. Thank